Nick Barr, Professor of Public Economics here at LSE, but very well known, if I may say so, as the father of student loans. One of the fathers. One of the many fathers. Well, a major father, a primus inter parentis. Fees are now 9,000. The latest estimate is debt cancellation of 45%. This hasn't worked out as you expected, has it? It hasn't because governments, when presented with strategies, have a horrible tendency of cherry picking, picking the bits they like and not the bits they don't like. So whilst I support fees, I absolutely refuse to be put into a position where I support the 2020 reforms, which took a good set of reforms in 2006 and made a complete mess of them. But even in 2006, you were saying the way the system works for graduates is not well understood. Now, it's true by 20. 11. You were saying governments have done a disastrous job of explaining the costs, woeful beyond belief. This is you shouting from the sidelines, even as early as 2006, saying, give me back my ball, I want to design it myself. No, no, that wasn't the point saying they'd made a bad job of the policy. It was they'd been, been unbelievably bad about explaining it because they allowed the opposition to hijack the words like debt. I mean, I said to Tony yeah. Blair, call it a graduate tax. Then people will put it in the payroll deduction bit of their brain rather than the credit card bit of their brain, which, it, and, you know, it, it should be seen as payroll deduction. But you're quite good at arguing about the advantages over the current system over graduate tax, aren't you? So you're your own worst enemy in a way. You showed, at least I think convincingly, that this was a better system, albeit now, of course, badly communicated. Fees and loans are the right system, but if you call it fees and debt, it's politically very difficult. So you have fees and loans, but you call it a graduate tax because it's a good enough approximation and people will then understand, as I say, it's payroll deduction, not credit card And debt. so the debt, in a way, is a foregone income rather than a debt on this analysis. Well, the thing is, when, when students say to me, you know, you bastard, you're loading us up with £40,000 of debt or more, my response is to say that they've no idea how bad it really is because along with the 45,000 pounds of debt there's the million quid that a typical graduate's going to pay the government in income tax and national insurance over a full career and compared to that you know student loans I'm not saying it's trivial but it does need to be seen if in context. If they pay it back but the government's now saying something like six billion won't get paid back and you have what is now laughingly called I have to say a classic English illusion cash point college the sort of place that sets itself up draws in students no intention ever to get the money paid back into the Treasury. Is that not part of the system that even you designed, much less bad communication by government? No, that's because the 2012 reforms are so amazingly clever that they end up achieving not a single desirable objective. <laughs> I mean, the whole point about student loans is that most graduates should repay their loans in full. Loans are not a device for helping poor people. They're a device for helping middle-income people to pay for their higher education. And what you do to help people from disadvantaged backgrounds are entirely different things. It's a complete myth to say, if you make higher education cheap, it will widen participation. When we had no fees and still had maintenance grants, our participation in higher education from poorer backgrounds was absolutely terrible. And it's much better now, isn't it? This and is it's one plus better for now the day. because we finally learned that the impediments to participation are much more naught to 18 problems than 18 plus problems. So things like the literacy hour, the numeracy hour, um, education maintenance allowances, aim higher, things that give cash to people to complete A-levels, things that raise aspirations, The combination of the Cash Point College scandal, which makes the front page an undercover of lecturers teaching to nobody, and the feeling that it is debt might lead to a change. And that change could actually restore a kind of higher education as a middle-class perk approach against which you fought for so long prior to this new scheme. That's exactly why I say it achieves not a single desirable objective. People think they're facing very high debts when in reality they're not. They see sticker prices of £9,000 fees, a lot of which they won't repay, and that deters them. So they are deterred by the appearance, not by the reality. And if they understood the reality and the reality, the design of the reality was tweaked, it would be a vastly more progressive system than we have. Are you proud of it? I am proud of the strategy. I'm proud of the work that colleagues and I have done. Um, I am saddened by what politicians have made of it, but we live in a democracy and the alternative to getting into policy debates is just packing up our bags and going home and I'm not prepared to do that.
Nick Barr, thank you so much for submitting yourself to the Gear to Grilling. My pleasure.